I want to read to you I want to read to you two comments I want to read to you two comments that I had received on YouTube uh, and which I think deserve full full citation um, one comment was by Adam and the other one was by um, Red let's call him this way so I want to start with the with a comment by by Red um, and it's a hard a heartbreaking comment is referring to the video that to be a narcissist hurts and it's humiliating and he says Sam this video explains my life it's depressing to hear but even more depressing to live I know deep down inside that no one is home I don't exist I'm usually in a collapsed state fluctuating between emptiness and emotional turmoil unless I have a girlfriend which eventually she leaves me usually rather cruelly for someone who actually does exist and then I never hear from them again unless they need to use me for money or something else anyone is better than me because they exist and I don't I've gotten to the point now in my 30s and my most recent collapsed state that I no longer leave my house or interact with anyone I have not spoken to anyone in person for two months now and I'm emotionally crippled from my most recent collapse and do not want the world to see my failures or rather for me to see my failures through the eyes of the world which is mortification yes even more so to avoid seeing those more successful than me to see that to see that other people more successful is a knife in my heart I also deleted all my personal social media uh, person social media for the same reason additionally the rapid oscillation I experience between covert and overt thinking is maddening I can go from one hour bathing in grandiosity of my own goals fame wealth lovers returning to me to the next hour completely dead inside doing self-destructive behaviors alcoholism reaching out to people who do not care about me ex-lovers and so on calling phone psychics to help to hopefully mirror me and this cycle sometimes happens multiple times a day I do not believe I can pull myself out of this collapse this time I cannot garner the supply I need to exist anymore this is due to getting older probably and my recent career failings I also cannot replace the quality of supply I've had in the past model level women and high income so I'll probably just end up drinking myself to death in isolation over the next five years most realistically it would be better than living in my own shadow forever I know I can't change there is no me to change I've been like this since I was 13 or so but my ability to gather supply to garner supply and semi-successfully make my own delusions come true I was able to feel alive up until about the age of 30 with many severe and lengthy collapses between the years but still so I know change won't happen for me so there is only two outcomes for my life success and get the supply I need wealth women etc and feel my blood pump again or become completely schizoid and never leave my house again there are no other options for me I know this deep inside deep down inside I hope I succeeded the first one but even being schizoid and never leaving my house is preferable to regular life as I cannot function in it and it causes me immense emotional distress to live as a normal person I have to be massively successful and if I'm not then I will hide away from the world women people life itself instead and possibly forever to other people reading this having this disorder is living hell I personally was not big on the lying or abusing side of having the disorder as I was usually collapsed but having this disorder is like living in a perpetual nightmare that you can never escape knowing you don't exist is horrifying looking in the mirror and seeing no one is there it's even more horrifying when you realize that someone else has discovered that you do not exist when someone realizes you don't exist they want to get away from you like Sam said even treat you as an object because in a way you are it makes it easy for people to use you yes I do feel emotions 
but mostly painful ones. Emptiness, anger, anxiety, depression, paranoia. Then on a really profound day, uh, bottomless shame, with an occasional spike of euphoria and adrenaline supply, if I'm so lucky. But those emotions, while they make me feel like I exist, when they're absent, so am I. They no longer cover up the glaring void of myself. Who could love someone who doesn't exist? It is like loving an android, a programmed human, someone who will never be the real thing. You can't love an android. You can only use the android. When people finally discover that you are this android of a man, they will begin using you, taking advantage of you without guilt. How can one feel guilt for abusing an object? Also because I know I'm an android, it helps them. Offering myself to someone, only myself, is of no value. And so I must compensate with wealth, looks, worldliness or talents. At least then, for her, she might get something out of the relationship. F for as a person, only as a person, I'm unlovable and probably even repulsive. A complete nothing. So, this is, um, this is a very, very harrowing and, and horrible, horrible description of what it feels like to be a narcissist and I wanted you to, to see and hear that this is um, not only me because people keep keep thinking that when I make a video it's about me it's autobiographical it's not it's based as I said on thousands of interviews over the years one billion data points I am summarizing for you the total experience of all narcissists all over the world so don't don't just say ah that's Sam. That's not just Sam. You heard just heard another another um, narcissist telling you what this is, and this leads me to nothingness. I propose nothingness is a is an antidote to narcissism. So first of all, I made the nothingness playlist. You can go on my channel, and now you have a playlist with all the videos on nothingness. So you can watch them. Start from the bottom and go up. And someone asked me, is Heidegger's Dasein, is it a forerunner of mindfulness? And, and so on. Is it a forerunner of my nothingness? Does it represent my nothingness? Dasein is a forerunner of mindfulness and of some existentialist concepts. And it is a Cartesian concept in essence. Dasein is how we experience being, how we experience existence. My principle of nothingness takes the sign for granted. The sign is like a foundation. My principle of nothingness is the house that stands on the foundation. It is the next stage. It is what you do with your being. How, not, how to not let others appropriate your being, your existence, your sense of self-worth. The universe couldn't care less about you. And no part of the universe is connected to all the other parts. Imagine if one part of your smartphone would have been connected to all the other parts, or one part of your television, or one part of your computer. When one part is connected to all the other parts, it leads to a dysfunction, to a breakdown. Parts are firewalled. They're walled off from other parts. You have no impact in Bangladesh. No one is aware of your existence, and when you cease to exist, it will have zero impact in the vast, overwhelming majority of this Earth, which is nothing but a speck of dust in the universe. So no, the universe, whatever it is, doesn't care about you, about your existence or lack of existence. And you are not connected to anyone or anything, let alone to a single unity. A finite mind, which is your mind and my mind, a finite mind, cannot know anything, can know nothing about an infinite mind, like God's. My view of God is that it is, a, the, the, it is humanity's false self. It's a grandiose projection. It's the imaginary friend. Humanity is in a primitive, infantile state, so it had invented the false self and called it God. But even if God were to exist, he's infinite, and he has an infinite mind. What can your mind know about it? 
I keep, I keep watching evangelicals and other self-styled gurus telling you, God wants you to do this. God thinks that this. God disagrees. How on earth do you know anything about God? Isn't this the epitome of grandiosity, hubris, and narcissism? And if it is unconscious, by definition, it's not known and can never be known. All statements... Every single fake con artist who tells you that you are part of the universe, part of a big unity, that God cares about you, that um, you can know your own unconscious. I mean, these are lies, prevarications. These people are crooks. They are using your brain dead existence, your brain dead design to enrich themselves. Wake up, people. You are being abused and exploited by narcissists who pretend to be empaths <laughs> or empathic people or possessed of some special access to God, to the universe, to some occult, mysterious, esoteric knowledge. They are laughing all the way to the bank at your unfathomable, profound idiocy. Trust me on this. I correspond with many of them.